Okay, so we're doing part two of ethics with Jennifer Hernandez and uh, um, my group of GAN, my GAN, BCBA, future BCBAs. Okay, guys, 7.02, ethical can violations. You, can you share your screen? Oh, it's not sure. Oh, that's right. No, uh -huh. it's small. Let's see dogs Google. Yeah, oh. it's, it's the top part of your screen only. It's not showing everything. Uh, wait, let me, let me try again. Let me see. I don't know why I always have a little bit of issue when I share. Is it working now? Yes. Awesome. awesome. Okay. So we had just gone over, the, I think, questions that, are, are, that talk about this topic. And by the way, I color coordinated it, guys. <laughs> so whenever you see the PowerPoint, you can see the color coordinated ones, They're, they belong together, okay? So ethical violations by others and risk of harm, this is part C. So if an informal resolution appears appropriate and, and would not violate any confidentiality rights, behavior analysts attempt to resolve the issue by bringing it to the attention of that individual and documenting their efforts to address the matter. Mm, still good. So it's combining both things, right? We bring it to their attention in person, face to face, and we find a way to document the efforts to address the efforts that we made to address it. If the matter is not resolved, then behavior analysts report the matter to the appropriate authorities. In this case, it would be uh, the employer, the supervisor, the regulatory authorities, or the BACB if it has to go there. And then in the book, it had this little extra information for us, which is, which is only if there's no immediate harm to the client. So this step is only if there's no immediate harm to the client, then you talk to the individual. If there's immediate harm to the client, then you need to, you know, check the client first. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we need to talk to the individual face to face, which we already covered, is if they accept that they have broken an ethical code and changed their way, that's fantastic, good, they'll change it, we'll move on. But if they don't want to change their ways, then report, report them. For example, for example, something that they could be doing, that it, uh, they could be doing double billing or plagiarizing another BCBA behavior plus, okay? That is not necessarily affecting the client, like, harming the client emotionally or physically okay i am a bcba and i am a member of an aba facebook group i love the group because there we can vent about our bosses and the issues we have and the and the clinic i make sure that when i vent i don't say the name of my company or my bosses i don't want to break any ethical <laughs> okay guys I'm a good girl so the BCBA did not break any ethic code because she doesn't mention her boss or company's name by name the BCBA did break an ethic code because she should discuss the issues with her boss in person the BCBA did break an ethic code because she and I forgot how to write the rest but none of the above. So let's ignore this one. And there. <laughs> we didn't see that. <laughs> Was I fast enough? I don't think so. <laughs> They're gonna do that in the exam, I hope. Oh yes. <clears throat> well, let me guess. Is it B? I don't know. I don't know, Maria. <laughs> Well, this is kind of similar to the previous one because you need to talk in person first. So. Good job, guys. I hope it is the answer because I don't remember. Yes, it's B. And there is the page number. So, um, although she didn't say the name of the boss or the company, it's still an ethical violation. And by the way, there's a whole page in the book that explains that somebody did something uh, similar in Facebook and they didn't mention the name of the boss or the company, but they mentioned enough information that 
when one of the people, that her, one of her coworkers went into the Facebook group, they were able to see what she was talking about. Yeah, and they matched it. So the key thing is, is we, we shouldn't just say, oh, I'm not saying the name. It's, it's the same thing that we always say in our disclaimer, the fact that we cannot mention any identifiable information about our clients or company or anything like that. And it's tricky because if I only have two clients and I keep on saying one of my clients, one of my clients, anybody can just know who it is. You know what I mean? Even if I don't say the name of the client. So it's not black and white. We have to read the whole scenario and see the whole situation for the test and for the everyday life, I guess. Okay. Anybody else? So what's your suggestion where we should gossip about the boss? Huh? I'm saying, so what's your suggestion where we should go and gossip about the boss? Go to your agency. Find pain outside of work. <laughs> oh, outside of work? Your husband, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> My that's, not as, that's not ethical either. That's not ethical either. No, no, no. We're angels here, guys. We're angels here. <laughs> no. Not ethical, guys. No. <laughs> well i think i had seen something just recently on facebook too where people yeah. kept asking for advice about certain yes, clients and some, and somebody reminded them you know the yeah. tutor, supervisor this is just not so which i totally agree yeah it was i think the nick posted that i believe right Shh, don't say names oh no no <laughs> don't say names but yeah they need it sorry sorry okay. <laughs> but uh yeah there were some reminders about that i mean i think when you want to share resources with regards to like do you have pictures or do you have something that's you know free or like kind of like we do here mm -hmm. it would be okay but to get specific on how should i treat this maybe you should like try to do it within your company yeah so. it's not professional right but but I saw some, one girl posted a letter, like she whiteed out some stuff, but she posted Ooh, a letter. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that. But oh, I, I, <laughs> I was, yeah, she was venting. Wow. Yeah, we got to be very careful when we do well, that. That's why I use the word venting on Facebook because I see, we see it all the time. We, yeah. we see it a lot. And I don't know yeah. why people risk it. It's not worth it. We, we mm -hmm. struggle so much to pass this test. Mm -mm. And everything that for you know a minute and people sometimes forget that facebook and youtube and everything it's out there you know mm -hmm. and for any profession i mean you know whether you're a teacher or you're a doctor or whatever you want to want somebody that you go to for services to be sharing your information you know mm -hmm. so it's just not we have to be professionals at all times. correct correct okay so the 7.02 is ethical violations by others and risk of harm if the matter meets the reporting uh, requirements of the BACB then behavior analysts submit a formal complaint to the BACB for example this is an example that I read in the book a BCBA reported a co-worker that had made an anonymous allegations against her she sent a letter to the BACB stating that all, all the ethical, uh, about all the ethical violations her coworker had made. The coworker had sent an anonymous email to her boss that was full of anger and allegations about the BCBA and her supervisor having a normal relationship with uh, favoritism in work assignments. It's a little, let me explain it a little bit because I don't know if, he, if you're able to see it. Here, there were a bunch of ethical violations going on. The first thing that happened was a coworker, basically, let's say Jenny, I'm the coworker. I got mad with Danny and I sent our boss a very mean email saying, Danny is doing this and she's doing that and she's getting together with Nadia and blah, 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 blah. And even her children are getting in the way. And, and she talked about Danny, but without using Danny's name. She talked like she's, you know, she's like Juanita. She's, she's, she has dark hair and blah, blah, blah. She said enough <laughs> to, to, for, for the boss to know who it was. <laughs> I'm making you laugh. <laughs> okay. 
So she said, I love the Kuanita part. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, she, she said enough information for the boss to know who she was. And the problem was that the boss sent back, this is unethical. You need to tell me who you are and you need to tell me face to face and talk to her face to face. But what happened was that me, Jenny, the one that sent the email, never show up. I, she never said who she was. She never did anything like that. So they had to hire an investigator. Things went on and on. The thing is that the one that got in trouble is the one who sent the email. Why? Because she didn't do it face to face. Or in a professional manner either. Or in a professional manner. And one of the ethic codes that were broken there was that, which I put it here, but I'm going to unblock it anyways, uh, was that she did not confront her face to face and she failed to maintain the, BC, the original BCBA's conf confidentiality and even her kids. And she failed to keep confidential information privately. So she sent like two or three pages to the, to the board explaining all the ethical violations that all the person had committed for sending the email. So, wow. for when you vent. Well, they, they said at the end of the book, they explain about the results and they're like, we, it's unethical for us to say what happened to her. <laughs> but we can tell you that she left the company and she even left the state. <laughs> so, oh my God, that was bad. Wow, wow. Okay, wait, wait, I'm confused, but isn't it also unethical for the boss to make, I know that you're saying that there was enough information for her to gather who it was, but, but for that person to share with the BCBA, you know, this information and then for her to go and, you know, write her own letter, isn't that also wrong? The thing is that they were trying to investigate who it was. Yeah, I don't, I, uh, that's a good point. Uh, she was trying to investigate. The, I think the boss, we can read it there in the page later, but uh, the boss was trying to investigate who did it, and she found out through the IP address. And I think somehow the other person also knew, but I don't, I don't, they don't say that the boss talked to the victim in person or you know they don't say that the boss the boss is the one that contacted the victim they don't give that so the part. person the co-worker that sent it anonym, on, anonymously specifically stated who they were speaking about they 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 said that they didn't give the name but they gave enough personal enough identifiable information for the boss to know who it was and she also talked bad about her co-workers children which is the thing is that uh, no anonymous, no venting, just calm and collected people, calm and collected. But yeah, yeah we're, we're in the field of uh, ABA, so our, we have to be role models in behavior. Yeah. So basically, you mean to say if someone has any issues related to this, the person has to just first do the face to face rather than complaining to higher department or anyone else. Is this you mean I to think say? what they're saying here? They were doing it basically, uh, uh, they were doing little by little, right? If, if, if something happens, you talk to, if I have a, pr a problem with you, I talk to you in person. I cannot go to my boss and say, oh, oh hey, uh, Pavari, you know, Pavari is behaving bad. She's doing little, blah, 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 blah. No, no, no. Okay. I can't do that. I have to go directly to you. And okay. if I go to my boss and I say that, then my boss, the ethical thing would be for my boss to say, hey, you need to talk to Papari, you know, face to face and you need to talk to her about it. In other words, that's, that's gossiping. That's kind of like gossiping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. It's okay. that it happens a lot. It happens more than we yeah. would. But that's good, you know. Good example you provided. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Okay, so let's see. Uh, there's a question that goes with something that we haven't covered, okay? I am a BCBA, and I am a member of an ABA study group. I think this is sort of the same, but different. Okay, 
I love the group because they're, they're, there we can vent about our bosses and the issues we have at the clinic. I make sure that when I vent, I don't say the name of my company or bosses. Which ethic codes did the BCBA break? Okay, so now I want you to give me the name. What do you think? The, uh, the BCBA did not break any ethic codes. One of the names could be public statements. Another one could be disseminating behavior analysis or promoting ethical culture. B. Public statement, B. B. Uh, B. Wow, guys, that was fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good at this one. Okay, so it's public statement. Uh, this ethic code is, re is relevant anytime you are communicating with the public about your product, service, or the field of applied behavior analysis. And it's included, but not limited to advertising, listing a professional, uh, professional directory, presentation, any form of oral presentation when we are out there, you know, giving presentations or conferences or workshops or anything like that, or any form of printed publication or social media. And I highlighted social media because there is where we enter. We are social media because we post it in YouTube. And whenever we are in Facebook, which we do a lot, that's social media. So be careful. Okay, this is from another one that we haven't covered. The uh, lady is uh, uh, creating her business website and she wants her future client to be informed of all the certifications she currently has. She will post that she is a BCBA, a special education teacher, and she is certified in auditory integration training. There are no ethical violations in the above scenario. Lady should post that she is a BCBA and a special education teacher, but not, but that she has, but not that she has an auditory integration training. Lady should post that she is a BCBA and that she has an auditory integration training, but not that she is a special education teacher. Lady should only post that she is a BCBA. D. C. C. We have D. a C. Anybody else? D as in dog. D as in dog. Mm -hmm. We have only two guys. We are 11 members, participants. I want more. Hmm. I would say D as well. D. Today I'm going to push you for four answers. Who's the next one? Me and one of the person we said together D. So, come to. <laughs> Everybody say D. Why do you all say D, say D though? Oh, well, there you go, because it's, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's right. I agree. <laughs> the reason it's D, because once you earn your BCBA degree, that's the only one you claim. The yeah. other ones, you don't, because that's the highest one that you claim. And yeah. I think that's how you, but, you sign your but, name, right? You cannot but, sign... But, you can assign your name and then put uh, BCBA and then a special education teacher or all those degrees that you have, you cannot put it like there. No. So, but, but I think I, I read somewhere that you put BCBA and if you put uh, uh, other thing, you have to put that there is no evidence that this is um, evidence-based. You put up that. I think a question like that. But, uh, what I study is, I have seen that it depends on what services you are providing. If you are providing a BCBA services, then in your visiting card or whatever, it should be only the BCBA should be mentioned. If you are providing a different services, so you should use a different one. It depends on what you are providing. Good. Yeah. In this case, accordingly. In this particular question, you, it, it was about your business, like website. Maybe I should say your her, her ABA, your ABA business website. Would that yeah. sound good? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's better. If whole business, then they can mention all three, but you have to mention that the other two are not. Okay. So we have to avoid files. Or Le guys, we're having a lot of feedback, so if you can mute. Okay, 
that's feedback. Feel free to unmute yourself whenever you want, okay guys? Okay, so where were we? So avoiding false or, defe uh, or defective statements. Uh, the question was talking about this part right here. When providing the credentials in conferences or websites, they include only those credentials that relate to ABA. Also, behavior, behavior do not make public behavior analysts. Do not make public statements that are false, deceptive, misleading, exaggerated, or fraudulent. And be careful with the exaggerated one because that us Latin people tend to exaggerate a bit. Or maybe I, you know, I don't know. Never mind. Erase what Very I true. <laughs> Erase what I said. <laughs> that might not be good. <laughs> okay. no. no, because I'm like, oh my God, we're awesome. Yeah, no. Yeah, any that's unethical. Come on. <laughs> Hold it back. <laughs> We're okay. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, guys. Let's breathe it in, breathe it out. Let's go to the next one. Okay. Minerva is a BCBA. She's creating her business website. Let's say her ABA. ABA business website. She is planning to write. There you go, Milema. You're you're up and going. No, I got scared when I heard my name. I was like, what? She woke up. She woke up. <laughs> Hello, let me read it so I can answer right. <laughs> okay, Minerva, listen, you're opening up your own business. So listen, okay? Minerva is a BCBA. She's creating her ABA business website. She is planning to write the following. Binerma is a board certified behavioral analyst, has worked with colleagues who use DRI, floor time, handwriting without tears, sensory integration, and helps evaluate their effectiveness. Please note, uh, these interventions are not behavior analytic in nature, in nature and are not covered by my BACB credential. Is this ethical? Is is it ethical for Minerva to write the above statement in her website? Yes, no. What? I don't get. B. No. Yeah, B. If it's B, ABA based, then no. If it's just business, then yes. <laughs> well, DRR, floor time, handwriting, all of that is I'm not, not so sure. evidence no. based. No. Yeah, so he mentioned that, right? He said it's not evidence based. None of that is ever. Focus on this one, guys. Focus on this. Mm -hmm. She's also writing this part. He's mentioning it. She could. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's, like that's, a, that's like a disclaimer. Yeah, and she's also mentioned that she has worked with colleagues who use. Oh, uh, man. She's not false advertising. Ah, oh, is. Yeah. Oh, boy, you tricked us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I took it. I, I took it. Uh, it's one of the examples that they have in the book. I just tweaked it a little bit. Can you repeat the question? Can you repeat the question yes. complete yes. In, in the entirety again, please? Yes, yes. I'm going to do it right now. Look, and this okay. one, I also want you to focus on this part. That's okay. What she does. That's what she does. Okay. 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 So repeat it again. So, Minerva, she's doing awesome. She's opening up her own business. So, she created her ABA business website. She is planning to write the following in her business website, okay? Okay. Minerva, a board certified behavior analyst, has worked with colleagues who use DIR floor time, handwriting without tears, sensory integration, and helps evaluate their effectiveness. All okay. she does is help evaluate their effectiveness. And also, she also writes, please note, these interventions are not behavior analytic in nature and are not covered by my BACB credential. BCBA. Okay. BCBA. BABC. Yes. BCBA credential. BCBA credential. BCBA. I wrote it right, right, guys? No, it's correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is this. Is it ethical for Minerva to write the above statement in her website? 
So now yeah. that we, I have pinpointed everything that I want you to look at, what do you think? Is it ethical or unethical? It is yes. ethical. Yes. Ethical. <laughs> yes. And that wow. one is page 181. Okay, let, okay. Me try, let me tell you what they wrote. Before that one, they wrote one that was not ethical. You ready? Okay, yeah. It says, I'm going to switch the name just to, for us to go with the same scenario. Minerva okay. has experience. Minerva has experience. That's the key change in all of those. DRI, floor time, sensory integration, blah, blah, blah. And much more. You see? That's the difference. He, in the unethical one, she wrote that she herself has experience with all those services. Right, right, right. And she left it like that. Got it. In this one, she wrote that she, is, she has worked with people who does it and that she, what she does is that she evaluates the effectiveness. Perfect. Mm -hmm. The same thing that we have said in the past. Remember, we have said that we collect the data. We don't. Yeah. Yes, exactly. you're basically just collecting data here. And they also said, if you want to go like and be double checking and be extra careful, write a disclaimer. Please know <laughs> that the interventions are not are not called by my BCBA Right, right. Makes That's sense. Awesome. So, so by writing that disclaimer, and if a parent comes over to my clinic and they want me to use uh, handwriting without tears, am I allowed to use that? No, or I have not. to say no because that's not a, a an intervention, you know. No, but I if you have a colleague, it. if you have an OT that works in your clinic, you can say I have an OT that works here that can use so collaboration yeah. for collaboration, okay. right? Is it like a collaborative effect? Like, yeah, no. and you can take Okay, okay, makes sense. Tricky, huh? It is. Yep. This whole exam. Yeah. And this is why I love ethics. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Guys, I've never even heard of handwriting without tears. I feel oh, like... Oh, no. I use it all the time. Have. I, I thought it was literally handwriting without tears, like without crying, not with that. Oh, no. That's <laughs> yeah. an actual writing program. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I have I used that one. Later on, when I entered the field, I realized... Yeah, I used that one when I was working at the school before I would decide to become a PCBA. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. So they use, they use it a lot. Mm -hmm. OTs use it a lot at schools, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, OTs use it a lot. Okay. So it would be good whenever we read about any of these treatments, for example, when I read about handwriting without tears, I've seen it done it. At the, I've seen people do it, but I wasn't 100% sure if they would, I don't know much about it. So I, I didn't know whether they had, they were based on ABA, you know, like when the, mm -hmm. uh, right. the picture exchange is yeah. on ABA. So whenever we encounter something like that, we need to make sure that the principles that they follow are ABA based. I remember picture exchange is part of augmented communication. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I just had to put that in there because I remembered it. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Nice. Yeah. Thank Tony, you. Right? So that's your name, Tony. Tony. Yes. Yeah. Good job, Tony. Thank. Thank you for uh, thank you. thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, Tony. Yeah, I'm here. I'm. I'm trying to get as much. I took the exam once before, and I got a 380. So I'm trying to retake it. So I kind of have a gist of what. Is there, but I'm trying to just get the concepts a little bit more. Yeah. To, yeah you know what I mean? Yeah. Knock it out. Right. Yeah, just to knock it out. This is uh. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, today, since it's ethics and it's a lot, we're almost done with time. Okay. We can do one of two things. Just leave it as it is. Whenever it's gone, it's gone. Or we can reopen it and finish some of the slides. But I, I, I understand that it's late and some of you have to wake up early. I don't. I, I wake up early, but not that early. Okay. Uh, so feel free. At, you tell me what you want to do, guys. Do you want me to reopen the Zoom or you, or you want to do... 
I can keep going, but it's up to the rest. I know that. I'd probably like have on Energizer Bunny right now. I need to get this done because I'm doing the next, I mean, next cycle of me. I'm not even doing August. So I'm trying to get everything in. Okay, Jenny, perfect. go for it. Go for it. Yeah. Let's go yeah. For it. Okay, so avoiding false or, or defective statements. This one has, um, this one is the continuation of the other one, C, D, and E, and I put them together. So don't advertise non-behavior analytic services as being behavior analytic service. That's, you know, given, right? Absolutely. Don't identify non-behavior analytic service on bills, invoices or requests for reinforcement uh, rain, rain, reimbursement i wrote it wrong rain that's okay that's okay how, how does it spell is it like it's that b b u r there you go uh do not implement non-behavior analytic services under behavior analytic service authorizations that we know it's a no -no. we know it's a no-no guys okay in the DCBA exam prep study group, we make sure to give credit to the authors of the visuals and books that we use in our Zooms and PowerPoints. This is an example of which a specific code of ethics. So basically in our group, we make sure to give um, credit to the people that created the books that we use, like Cooper, et cetera. So which ethic code do, are we using, are we following? Assistance by others, intellectual property, giving credit to the authors, or public statements. Is it B? C. B. B. Or D. B. B as in boy. Yeah, B as in boy. I have one for B. Two for B. Two for C. B. Yeah. Two for B. I heard someone say C. I said yeah. C. I, I think it was C, but I, I don't know. Yeah, I said C. Okay. Yeah, two people, two people said C and two said B. Okay. C and B. Let's see the answer, guys. The answer is B. Why is the answer B and not C? Who knows? Because that belongs to them. <laughs> it's their property. Because giving credit to the author is not one of the ethic codes. It's not. I just invented it. I invented it because it looked good in there. <laughs> so intellectual property, memorize, let's memorize that one. Okay, the other one is 8.02, intellectual property. Well, that's what I got the information from the question. Okay, so we need to obtain permission to use trademark or copyright material as required by law and that's important guys whenever we create our, our visuals or our powerpoints or anything like that uh, and we need to provide citations like we do here and we need to include any trademarks or copyright symbols uh, on materials that recognizes the intellectual property of others that's self-understood right that's uh, that's easy to understand give appropriate credit to authors when delivering lectures workshops and other presentations. And then the other part over here is, is um, from the book. So avoid using the first person when giving presentations in social and in social media. For example, I think, because that would get you like in trouble, meaning that you're not giving the credit to those people who create, who conducted the research or who came up with the information. That's why we keep on saying, oh no, Skinner said this, this, that, that. In the Cooper book, they say this, this, and that. It's much better than I think. I personally, when I am discussing issues with uh, information with you guys in other, in your Zooms, I always say, well, that's the way I interpret it. I like to use that because I, the, I read it and that's the way I, I interpret it. It doesn't mean that that's the way it is, you know what I mean? So that's the way I save, I, I make it safe. Okay. Uh, sometimes I mute you guys when I hear background noise, but please feel free to unmute yourselves. I hate to do that, but it's hard sometimes to hear. 
Okay, here's another one. Vanessa, Vanessa, you still here? Look, Vanessa, you made it. I had to get some edibles <laughs> to reinforce Look, myself. You made it to the you made it to the PowerPoint. I did it. You're famous. <laughs> <laughs> Vanessa, at this DBA, hired someone to manage your business Facebook and Instagram account. This person wrote the following post. This is the person that you hired, okay? Vanessa is the miracle worker. Bring your nonverbal child to her clinic and he will be talking in a week. Is the boss po is, Dang, is, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, man, you're awesome. <laughs> in, the above, uh, in the above post, is the above post ethical and who is ethically responsible for the written post? Oh my God, I have to change the, the color because it's just bogging my eyes. Oh, where we leave? Okay. Yes, it is ethical because you know, Vanessa is awesome. And Vanessa is responsible for the post. No, it is not ethical. Vanessa is responsible for the post. Yes, it is ethical. The other person is responsible for the post. Or no, it is not ethical. Vanessa is responsible for the post. Take your time because which one? B and D are the same. No, it's not. Oh, is it the same? Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe it. So B and D's answer. B and D. <laughs> I don't know. Why was I supposed to write there? I forgot. So it should have been the other person. Uh, okay. So D instead of Vanessa, change it to the other person I hired. I hired. <laughs> My God. Okay. So do you know the answer, guys? You said it already, I think. Right? It's B as boy. B as in boy. Yes, it is. So even if the other person wrote it, She's still responsible for it, right? So that means we need to check what all the people do, the work that other people do on their RD. Because is her license on the